Welcome back to Yellow Card Vanguard. I'm your host, Toku from It's Toku TV on Twitch. Throughout the week, I'm streaming Vanguard on my Twitch channel. We'll be building decks, playtesting, and just having a grand old time, so be sure to swing on by. With new Clan Classroom reveals coming out every day, you know what that means. It's time for a new chapter of Clan Collection Cores. I want to preface this video and the entirety of the series by saying that many of these lists are entirely conceptual and surface deep and will need your own playtesting to fine tune. But each of these will aim to provide a way of thinking on how to take your new support in Clan Collection 3 and 4 and put it into a working deck. They won't all be optimized, but I believe they will be a good baseline to build off of. Welcome to Clan Collection Cores. This episode features the other half of Genesis support, the new boss unit, Yadagarasu. Yadagarasu brings Genesis what is colloquially known as a Mordred clone, and also has a very defensive skill in her own as well. More in line with the Genesis paradigm of Soul Charger to Soul Blast for powerful effects, Yadagarasu is a very traditional Genesis card, bringing in a very traditional V Premium effect. Let's see if Yadagarasu in V Premium has as much impact as it once did in another card game. Introducing the new boss herself, Sunlight Goddess Yadagarasu. Two Vanguard Circle effects here, the first being, on attack, you can counter Blast 1 and Soul Blast 3 to perform the following effects based on the sum of the grades of the three cards you Soul Blasted. Five or more, your front row gains 10k, seven or more, you stand two rear guards, nine or more, you draw two cards. For second effect, when your unit is put on the Guardian Circle, you can Soul Blast 3 to give that unit an extra 10k shield. Yeah, that first effect is very Mordred clone, giving your typical force 5 attack turn, so long as the 3 cards you soul blasted have a sum of 7 or more. Her second effect makes her surprisingly bulky as well. Being able to produce an extra 10k shield out of nowhere makes unguardable turns very survivable. The new grade 1 is Apple Witch Cider. At the end of the battle that she boosted, you can either Soul Charge 2, Soul Charge 1 and bounce her back to hand, or do nothing. When she is placed on the Guardian Circle, you can put one card from your hand into Soul, and then for every 3 Soul that you have, Cider gains 5k shield. Cider is an amazing card. The fact that her first effect is Trimodal gives you a lot of options on what to do based on your Soul, your deck count, etc. Her second effect, despite being a really large guard, also helps set up your Soul for large numbers so you can keep on the Yadagarasu pressure. And also plays with Yadagarasu's second effect of being able to soul charge from hand to get those extra 5k shield values before you soul blast 3 with Yada skill to gain that extra 10k guard. Going right into the list here, our wing con is the Genesis wing con if you're not playing Astral Poet, and that is Yggdrasil Norn. Getting that Yggdrasil that one extra attack makes the wing con that much more potent, and as such, we're looking to max out on Ig, Norn, and Yadagarasu at 4 pieces each. Now, with our wing con set in stone, we look to try and make it as consistent as possible, but first, we need to give respect to Yadagarasu's cost and requirements. As I myself have stated before, I don't think Yadagarasu is good until you're able to consistently hit that 7 to 9 sum benchmark for the restand and draw to each turn. Mind you, this is also not restricted by riding this turn or your opponent being a grade 3, mind you. So I'm looking for high grade cards that go to soul and that cards that can push high grade cards back into soul. In these slots, I've opted to draw 4 copies of Strongbow of the Starry Night Ulexes, 3 Arcturus of Fervent Will, and 3 Mythical Destroyer Beast Vanagander. Vanagander and Ulexes are fairly self-explanatory. These are high-grade rearguards that go to soul post-battle. But why Arcturus? Isn't that an Astral Poets card? It might seem a bit... delusional. But we run her because she counts as a great foreign soul. The inclusion of a great foreign soul makes multiple different combinations for reaching the soul sum of 9 easier. Without her, the only way to get it is to soul blast 3 grade 3s. But with her, we can then soul blast 1 grade 3, herself, and a grade 2 to make 9, 2 copies of herself, and a grade 1 to make 9. It just opens up a lot more options. The last 11 slots are all of our grade 1s. We've opted to run. 4 copies of White Brush Witch Arctic. For the selective soul charge, since we do need specific cards in soul rather than a mass amount, the second effect is Icing, being able to become a solo attacker after Yagarasu's attack. We run 4 copies of Cider because not only does she provide soul charge, she also provides selective soul charge through her guardian skill as well. Not only that, there's also a really cool line of play where you're able to boost a unit with her, 
choose to Soul Charge 2, then restand that column with Yadagarasu since it's ending 2 rear guards. Then after the second battle that she boosts, you can Soul Charge 1 and bounce her back instead. Effectively making Yadagarasu a free Soul Blast 3. Lastly, we're going to run 3 copies of Skull because this deck is very reliant on her grade 3s. Rewriting Yadagarasu is an extra grade 3 in Soul. Fighting Vanagander so it can be Soul Charge is also another grade 3 in Soul. And Yggdrasil is just part of our win con. Going to our trigger lineup, it's very obvious, but we are running 4 Grade 3 Heal Guardians. Not only is it providing defensive power in the early game, but it does double duty by being a Grade 3 should it ever be Soul Charged. We run 4 Draw Sentinels and 8 Criticals for Aggression. Now, if we find that Counter Blast in this deck is way too harsh, we can opt to have Yada be our only source of Counter Blast and move towards an alternative attacker in Iwanagahime. Being able to restand Iwanagahime is big juicy since she's already so big to start off with, and you can start considering Force 2 because of that. We can also move slots to Prometheus of Dancing Lights. Plays a similar role to Arctic, but he's a grade 2 and he's able to swing for solo because he gains his power on attack. Lastly, if we do opt to move towards Iwanagahime instead, we would have more main phase Soul Blast, and thus could definitely consider running Witch of Oranges Valencia once again. Valencia being able to boost Arcturus would then be able to move it to Soul, and when Soul Blasted through the uses of Iwanagahime or Vanagander, we'll be able to put more Arcturuses back into the Soul again or any other Grade 3 so that way you're able to keep Yadagarasu Soul Blast 3 for a sum of 9 going and going and going. Once again though, Genesis does show its main weakness in V Premium that isn't Pure Regalia or Astral Poets that Counter Charge is very much lacking. And it's obvious here especially since Yara needs to be used every turn, Iga and Norner also counter blast reliant themselves. That said, I think if there's a build that would do anything to the meta, it could be Yadagarasu. Having access to Vandergander so you're able to stack for defensives makes Yara deceptively tanky in conjunction with her Guardian skill, and lets you leverage tempo to the point where you might be able to muscle your opponent out of the game with these multi attacks. In any case, that is it from me for this episode of Clan Collection Cores. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for more content like this, like the video as it helps motivate us to keep the gears going, and leave a comment down below. Every little bit helps the channel. This has been Togu from Yellow Card Vanguard. Togu out.